right, everyone. I have a very vast, very vast sweater collection, as you all can see right here. And all of my sweaters are very meaningful, very special to me. Most of them are hand-me-downs, um, vintage pieces from folks in my family, and they all mean so much, and I love them so dearly. So I wanted to give you all a little tour of what my sweater collection looks like and give you all some ideas of how I wear them for fall. One thing that you must absolutely know about me is I'm a sucker for cute little details. I'll show you all some of the reasons I have a particular fondness for all of these sweaters. By the way, if you hear any radiator noises, any dronings from outside, that's just New York for you. So. Be like a New Yorker and just ignore it. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna get started. The first sweater I wanna go through is not a vintage one, but it is very special and very meaningful to me. It is this one. It's from a company called Backbeat Co. That is BIPOC owned. They're actually part of the companies that actually give a shit highlight on my profile on Instagram. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check out the hashtag. Intersectional Environmentalist did a collab with them earlier this year and uh, we made some sweaters together, some clothing together, um, and we really wanted to imbue a lot of the art that is very known to IE. We ended up coming up with these really cool patches. We came up with some cool scarves as well, and the patches were sold individually or they were sold on sweaters like this. Here's what it looks like. It says climate justice is social justice and it's got some cute mountains in the back. Definitely a lot more casual than some of the other sweaters I have, but it's so cozy and so comfortable. I love the way that the cuffs are kind of tight. Unfortunately, these sweaters with a patch are no longer on sale. However, I do think that Co uses the style still of sweaters. So I'm gonna put a link in the caption as well in case you're interested in um, getting one for yourself. They have a bunch of different colors as well. Um, and I'll show you how I style it. Quick tip for increasing the longevity of your sweaters, fold them like this, don't hang them because when you hang them, gravity will kind of pull it down and it ends up stretching up the shoulders. So if you want your sweaters to last a really, really long time, then definitely fold them. Up next, I am so, so in love with this sweater. This one was my grandmother's when I was sifting through all of her closets in her house in Paris. Um, I remember coming across this one and just immediately falling in love. A simple black sweater, but it's got these really, really adorable, precious detailing. It's got this little bit of texture as well that is so, so subtle, but really brings so much life into this sweater. But it's so versatile, it's so cute, and um, I love, like I said, I love how precious these little details are, and I'm definitely gonna be keeping this for forever, um, so you will be seeing it for a long time. <laughs> Reminder for anyone who needs it to take a quick hydration break. We still have a lot of sweaters to work through. <laughs> All right, next up, this one. I know, I know, I know it looks really simple, but if you notice, do you see these like little cutouts right here? They're just these tiny little details that make it so much more precious, make it so much more dynamic than just any other simple black sweater. Honestly, when I was going through the closets in my grandmother's house, everything kind of melds together. So it was either my grandma's or my mom's or my aunt's, one of them. I'm definitely gonna be keeping this for a long time, especially considering the family history that it has. <laughs> the next sweater that I'm going to be showing you is one of, again, all of these are my favorites. I really cannot say that enough, which I think is a good thing because it's a reminder that the clothes that we have are ones that we should really, really love as opposed to just having them sit in your closet and gather dust or be there if you maybe kind of have an occasion that you might potentially wear it at or if it doesn't fit. Even though I am a minimalist, um, I do really value and appreciate and love my clothes very dearly. This next sweater is 
my only like graphic sweater, I guess you could say. It's quite oversized. Here's what it looks like. I found this old photograph of my grandma wearing this sweater. Obviously I know that I have a lot of her clothing, but seeing her wearing it and then seeing me wearing it is just a beautiful little thing to be able to experience. I don't know if you can tell, it's a very light baby pink and the text itself is like a navy blue. It's quite oversized, so I usually try to pair it with clothing that's a little bit tighter and if not, then I'll just tuck it under my bra so it looks more like a crop um, and then I'll wear it with pants. Sometimes I'll also pair a like button down shirt underneath with a collar that I can pop out of the top um, and I'll just like wear that with leggings to the farmer's market when it's really cold and like kind of dreary outside um, but yeah th this is one of my favorite things to throw on it's so simple and like easy and it looks really cool This sweater, you all have most certainly seen it if you have been following me. This was my mother's. It is just a very, very simple, very lovely cardigan. It's got these really precious pearl button details. I like that I can either obviously wear it open as a cardigan or wear it fully closed, almost more like a, just like a regular sweater. And then sometimes I'll wear it backwards and I think that adds a nice lovely little touch to any outfit. A sweater mullet if you will. <laughs> a very subtly feminine piece, so I kind of like to balance it out with something that's a little bit more masculine to help kind of like keep it feeling more like me, I guess. This is from my mom's closet specifically. Um, she actually brought it to Texas with her when she moved from Paris, and now I am very lucky that she has passed it on to me. Oh, Excuse us, ladies and gentlemen. sweater one of my absolute loves it is so special to me this was actually my grandpa's so not my grandma's um but look how adorable i love this patterning detail it's definitely giving me like seinfeld vibes which i'm not that mad about and it's very very oversized so when I wear it I'll usually either tie it in the back with like a, a hair tie like we used to do back in middle school but is like stylish now and considered Y2K. It's so so warm so cozy. I love knowing that I have something from my grandpa as well because I feel like we're kindred spirits. Is absolutely one of the most beautiful pieces of clothing I own this detailing I'm obsessed I'm I'm obsessed it really just makes it so cool sometimes I'll wear it fully buttoned up sometimes I'll wear it almost like a cardigan um, and either way it looks so so cute so precious clothing really is not made like this nowadays anymore especially fast fashion brands definitely do not which is why i'm so grateful to be able to hold on to all of these pieces and um keep them alive for much longer so shout out to my grandma for being so swaggy and <laughs> hoarding all of her clothing over the years <laughs> I just waited 15 minutes for the droning outside to stop and also for my radiator to stop and you know what it's not gonna stop and that's okay I am only a semi-professional I do have this lovely navy simple turtleneck very minimal unfortunately it does have quite a bit of pilling so if anybody has a recommendation for like a low waist sustainable way to remove pilling on sweaters 
please leave a comment down below <laughs> this one's just really simple and then i just wear it with you know whatever whatever i have honestly it's so versatile i like wearing it with a little bit of gold um jewelry it adds a nice little pop of color because the navy is just super muted but still you know beautiful i think i feel like everybody needs it some sort of turtleneck and it was also my grandmother's um i pulled it from her house when i was clothing shopping at her place and yeah i'm just gonna i'm planning on keeping it for a long time it's really nice really minimal um i have had to sew a couple of the holes that it has gotten over the years I'm not seeing any of the holes that i've patched but i do see a new hole so i'm gonna have to patch that soon and honestly i feel like that's something that we really need to start doing more and investing our time in is just like repairing our clothing so often something as simple as like a broken zipper or a small hole will cause people to just throw a piece of clothing away even though the rest of the article is like still perfectly good to use so i think once we start investing more time and love into our clothing that's really how we invest in a more sustainable future it has to start with ourselves so rather than going out and buying the newest latest product putting some tlc into the clothing that you already have is going to make it last so much longer up is this very very simple very simple mock neck sweater that i have it's definitely steve jobs-esque it's a little bit longer on me so i'll usually end up tucking it underneath so um, it looks a little bit more cropped but this one is just super simple um it's originally from agnes b actually fun fact my grandpa used to make leather goods he was a, a leather maker leather smith tailor I don't know he made like leather jackets and bags and stuff and um, he would sell them to some of the larger fashion houses in Paris and one of them was Agnes B which is as I mentioned the brand of this sweater by complete coincidence um, this was a hand-me-down from my ex-boyfriend's mother <laughs> it's so simple and so easy but usually it's just like a when I want to throw something on and look cute guaranteed guaranteed to look cute every time <laughs> Okay, next up is this absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning, lovely, wonderful, oversized cardigan. Um, I don't really have a lot of brown clothing, I say as I'm wearing a brown tank top, of course. So this sweater is actually secondhand. It's originally from the bed -Stuy clothes swap. The people just like brought a bunch of their clothing that they no longer wanted and then they could essentially take anything that they wanted for free it was really really cool so i was volunteering there i ended up picking up this sweater and it has been such a staple for me i love how just like a chunky knit sweater it is it's so easy to throw on to anything seriously anytime i wear it i always get compliments on it so i have been loving it and you all have been loving it too so shout out to everybody who's given me compliments on instagram for wearing it <laughs> is a sweater that i have there was like a vendor at the farmer's market um last year and i knew i knew walking up to it that i didn't need any more sweaters but just for fun just for fun i decided to look at what was on the clothing rack and of course i found an absolute absolute gem of a piece here's what it looks like it's got these just like very beautiful very precious bows on the front super super subtle they do have quite the strong shoulder it's so so soft it also was such a steal i don't remember exactly how much i paid for it i want to say like 20 or 25 bucks but um it's so beautiful it's made of 70 percent angora and 30 percent nylon so you all know although i am vegan i am comfortable wearing or having like vintage secondhand pieces that are made of 
um, animal byproducts. I would much rather buy secondhand in general than buy something new. And because I'm not really adding to the demand, I'm comfortable getting stuff like this. So I hope to have a nice occasion to wear it for soon. <laughs> But not least, we have probably the most colorful sweater that I have. As you all might guess, it's very vintage, came from my mom's closet. How cool is this geometric pattern happening? So stunning. And it's got the bat sleeve, obviously very 80s style. Very lovely, very well done. I will say this sweater is a little bit itchy, um, so I don't wear it all the time. But my trick for that is I'll wear a shirt underneath, like a button-down shirt. I'll pop the collar out, and then I have a little bit of a layer in between my skin and the sweater. Then I can still wear it. It looks so cute. I don't really have a lot of, like, pieces in this burgundy color, but it honestly is one of my favorite colors. But it's just like a nice little funky 80s piece that I have. Such a classic and I am very excited to be wearing it this season. on making it to the end of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing where all my sweaters are from, why they're so special to me, and I hope this video inspires you to either fall in love with the sweaters that you already have, or instead of maybe buying only new sweaters or maybe buying fast fashion sweaters, consider buying sustainable fashion sweaters or thrifting or finding vintage ones. There are seriously so many beautiful ones out there. Anytime I'm in a thrift store, I always find some really precious sweaters. So definitely keep an eye out. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I can keep making more of them in the future. But that's my sweater collection. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.